Discovery video 46. We're back at Saratoga once again. That's uh, two days in a row full of highlights here. I got an allowance race here. That's not a preferred race. But I, as you can see here, I highlighted the uh, the track surface, the dirt, because the track was not fast. And that is a preferred race situation. Over on the, uh, let's log into the free area here. And uh, look for the banner for the Discovery Video Series. You click on that, it's got all the videos and the big red arrow. Here's your listing of value odds and overlay preferred races. In these races, I have a better than average chance on getting a high odds value odds winner or overlay winner. Uh, and the favorite frequently runs out. Um, let me read them off to you. All non-graded stakes in grade 3 races. All maiden claiming races. All maiden special weight races. All ra claiming races with a condition like non-winners of two lifetime, etc. All bottom and low level claiming races. All races run over the turf. And the one that applies to this race here in this video... All races run over a wet track. Basically, anything that's not labeled fast. It could be muddy, it could go sloppy, then they upgrade it to muddy, then they upgrade it to good. But believe me, especially in New York, when they upgrade a track condition from muddy to good, there's still a lot of moisture in the track. And I found it to be uh, true in my studies that there's fast... And then there's not fast. And then there's everything else. Now, uh, when a track is fast, it's fast. But when it's anything else but fast, that's a preferred race. So if it's labeled sloppy, muddy, or good, all those races are preferred races. So, all right, we got a preferred race. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the value odd source. We got one here, number three. Funky Monkey Mama, all right? You got to love the name, right? But am I interested in betting on this horse? Depends on the odds near post time. Let's check those out. Here's your Group A horses. Uh, the 7, Gambling Geraldine, was 5-2. to two. Uh, The 8, Hot Danger, was 4-1. to one. Number 3, Funky Monkey Mama, 15-1. And the two was seven to two. So as you can see here in Group A, Funky Monkey Mama at fifteen to one is a big overlay. True odds of four to one. Okay. Now the next thing. All right, we we've got the odds that interest us. So we're gonna make a bet. The next thing I like to do is I like to see if I can get some confidence in my fifteen to one shot. So I'm going to look at the icons that's got going on and everything else here. First of all, all these purple boxes, each one of those is one of the 36 proven winning overlay angles over on the uh, digest page. Your free ebook there. All right, you can read that in detail anytime you want. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of these icons. Uh, once again, the weight off angle rears its ugly head. I won't dwell on it two videos in a row, but suffice to say, there it is. It's not even a cheap race, so sometimes it works even in the races that are not cheap. But uh, I think more importantly here is your uh, blue and white trainer, special trainer, successful pattern, okay? If we want to know exactly what that is, is we got to look at the diamond report. Now, this is the quick F report we're looking at now. If we look at the diamond report, uh, it's the same report, only with more information. Now, here's the comment that applies to that blue and white uh, icon. I've highlighted it in orange. Trainer has much success getting them legged up on the turf, then switching them to the dirt. The turf to dirt angle, okay? So as you can see here, the horse was running third on dirt, second on dirt, third on dirt. 
uh, off form. So he throws some. Gary Gola throws this one on the turf for a conditioner. But the betting public only sees the horse ran dead last. They may or may not even notice it was on the turf. And they may or may not even, you know, have give any credit to anything else. But the betting public is pretty much, they look at the last two races, and this horse ran dead last in his last two races. That's why he went off at 15 to 1. Okay? But I'm showing you reasons on why this horse won. And you can have confidence in this horse. All right? Um, also, we have the best total class rating and the best full card report speed figures in the race. Now, our speed figures are a little different. Instead of measuring what a horse did and assigning it a number, and any any schoolboy can read what number is higher than the other number. Uh, our, and I'm not saying there's no value in speed figures, but it's an it's in the interpretation. Now our speed figure icon is generated on what we consider a projected predicted figure for today's race. Okay, so Funky Monkey Mama, basically what that icon is saying is that. Uh, we're predicting that uh, number three is going to run a, a high-speed figure race, and we base that on a, on a horse's whole career, all right? We take into account a lot of different factors there. But uh, as far as the figs down here, there's your figure of your total class of a 44. Sometimes we call that back class. Uh, so uh, this horse has got some class, a little bit of class compared to this group. Um, with a 44 total class rating, tied for the tops in speed uh, figures and uh, competitive purse level has the best there at 149. And a uh, little cherry on the cake, workout points. This is a uh, this is a rating that takes into account uh, patterns and distances of uh, races and workouts. 100 would be w perfect. Uh, this one's got a 97, so that's that's a nice little cherry on the cake. Okay, so I think we can have some uh, confidence in our 15 to 1 shot. So let's put the bet together. The bets are always the same. They never change. Through my 16 years of research, these videos are a uh, end result of what I honed and filed down to a... Uh, a uh, working well-oiled machine first bet always the win bet even if we're gonna play exotic wagers we must get the win bet down first alright because uh, if you got a 15 to 1 shot you don't want to have a trifecta ticket and somehow miss the try and you don't have any other way of cashing on this horse I mean we've all been there right if you've been around the game long enough, you've been there. It's painful. We don't need that. So that's why all of our bets start with the win bet. Now, the win bet is not only a bet of conservatism, although it is conservative. I will tell you that I know people that have unlimited bankrolls that only bet to win. So I don't want you to think that the win bet is a bet uh, strictly for those who are light in the bankroll. It's not. It's a very good conservative way of doing things, all right? But I got a whole menu here. Um, now, next up, you got, uh, after the win bet, next in line is exactas and daily doubles, all right? And what I like to do is I like to take my key horse at high odds. My I'll take my funky monkey mama, 15-1. I'm going to go do a uh, $2 exacta 3 all. I'm going to wheel. I always wheel my horse in the exacta. And I always wheel my horse in the doubles. All right? Uh, rolling doubles, you'd have to look ahead and see, okay, we got a, slot, a wet track, uh, so that's a preferred race, value odds horse. So you got a double coming in and going out. Okay? So you wheel exactas and you wheel doubles after the $10 win bet or whatever win bet you make. All right, trifecta. For those of you that got bankroll for trifecta wagers, here's how I play it. 
We're going to play the three on top all by herself. And then in the second position of the trifecta, we're going to put the seven, eight, two, ten. What that represents is the rest of the horses in group A and the top horse in group B. Okay? And then th th those are going to be in the second hole. So we got the three with the seven, eight, two, ten, and then with all for third and then your 10 cent super all for fourth okay that's how we do it and let's see what happened here funky monkey mama 112 uh, all right i promised i wouldn't mention anything else about weight for some reason when i when i dis discuss the the weight factor people People go nuts. For some reason, handicappers, horse players, a lot of them just w w refuse to accept that weight has anything to do with anything. And if that was true, why do trainers go out of their way to, to get their horse in as late as possible? Why do they seem to always go out of their way to do that? Now remember, as far as our angle is concerned, it's got to be the only horse in the race getting the five pounds or more weight off from its previous race. It's got to be the only horse in the race that that is that going on with. All right, it's a hell of an angle. Um, but you know, and trainers go out of their way to get weight, to get their horse in light. Now, I've said that the the weight angle is for lower class races, but this is proof right here. Uh in with a feather floated around the track, all right? Uh final odds just under 14 to 1. 2980 on the win mutual. We got good payouts here. We got the exact at 281.50. I see it ran 310. And okay, three ten. So that means we got the trifecta and the super paid well. Uh, the tri paid four grand. The super paid thirty one thousand dollars. Of course, we get we're getting a dollar in of that and ten cents of that. Uh, we're getting pieces of each. And uh, like I always like to mention in these races, uh, the favorite in a preferred race frequently runs out of the money. This one out of the superfecta completely. The favorite, the second favorite, the third favorite, and the fourth favorite. All out of the super. And that's how you can get a superfecta that pays 31000 Total on this one. Let's see here. There we go. $10 win bet, 149 return. A dollar trifecta for our strategy, 2010.50. 10 cent super for 10 cents return nice, 1,588 bucks. The exacta, like I showed you there, 281.50. And a couple of daily doubles, 105, and the other one was 370. So uh, total knockdown drag out here, $4,504. And uh, actually, it was a good day all around at Saratoga. There was uh, two other value odds winners. You had, um, I think, a third race, was it? Fourth race? Yeah. The fourth race, uh, Beautiful Nightmare, top pick, was a winner uh, at uh, fourth race. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, just under 12 to 1, 25 uh, a dollar value odds, top pick winner. And then also, we had, at the end, we had another one um, uh, there in race number 10, the feature race, the Vanderbilt grade 1, uh, Sean Avery, top pick of value odds horse. And again, with our best speed figures. And uh, a whole bunch of other things to like. Alan Iwinski, hot trainer. And uh, Sean Avery shocked just about everybody. Uh, returning uh, 
I'll get there eventually. Here we go. 17 to 1 on the final odds there. 685 is how it ran. So uh 6 8. So we hit all our strategies on that too. Um uh, 3620 on the win. Mutual trifecta, we get half of 860, 10 cents on the super. And remember, any track not labeled fast if it's labeled good, muddy, or sloppy, or wet fast, or anything but fast, or whatever new name of the year they're going to come up with, sealed, this and that, which is a bunch of BS anyway. Uh, they'll see, the problem is, the reason that they, they have a little monkey business with the track condition is whenever a track is not fast, the handle is greatly reduced because people don't like to bet into uh, uh on a track that's not fast people are scared of playing on a track that's muddy or sloppy or, or good when we find that great opportunities because the betting public has no clue what to do okay that's why we've made them preferred races because the betting public is lost uh on any on any surface that's not fast okay um basically you know keep that in mind when you're um when you're looking at track condition, um, as far as uh, money management's concerned, let me touch on that here. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, in case you were not available to watch the seventh race live and to see the horses going off at 15 to 1, twinspires.com has something called conditional wagering. Uh, they are not a, an advertiser with us. We we don't accept advertising on the website. Uh, but I I use Twin Spires, and I endorse their product. They got conditional wagering where you can make a bet, but you can set minimum mods on the horse you want to bet. So for example, I could bet Funky Monkey Mama. Say, my minimum accept odds twelve to one at zero minutes to post. The computer will look at the odds at zero minute to post, and if my horse has the odds I want as a minimum, it places my bet. If Funky Monkey Mama was bet down to 6-1 to one or whatever, below my odds, whatever I set them at, the bet is not placed. It's a fantastic thing that they have with that uh, uh, conditional wagering at uh, Twinspires.com. And I fully endorse them. Now, money management. It's, it's all part of the big puzzle. Made it, uh, excuse me, managing your bankroll is one big piece of the puzzle, and if it's eliminated, we have an incomplete puzzle. It doesn't look right. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Okay, you can be the best handicapper in the world, but if you're bad with money, you will not make a long-term profit. I've known a lot of good handicappers over the years, really good handicappers, that couldn't make money because they didn't know how to manage their money, and really they didn't put any effort into managing their money. So part of this is uh, managing the bankroll, all right? Whatever money you have set aside for horse racing, that's your bankroll, whatever that is, whatever amount that is. Now, my rule of thumb is you never want to bet more than 1% of that bankroll on any given race, and hopefully you're betting preferred races to begin with. But on any given race, 1% maximum, maybe 2%, of the bankroll maximum on any given race. The reason we do that, okay, is because at those at that figure, the chances of you tapping out are practically nil. All right. Okay. See, this is a game of big hits. Okay. We had twenty three ninety there at Del Mar, and then this one four thousand five hundred there. I wasn't even. I, I didn't even count the other two value odds horses, and then. Uh, and then the, the day before, another big hit, almost six grand at Saratoga, Delaware, four thousand seven hundred, uh, three thousand two hundred, Louisiana, uh, twenty two hundred here, Woodbine, forty three hundred here. I think you get the idea. This is how you make a long term profit in these big scores, okay? Not dribble and drabbling at the nickel slot machines. That will get you nowhere but empty pockets. These big scores. Now, if we manage our bankroll, we can get from one big score to the next big score. 
because if we got a hundred dollars in our pocket and we're betting twenty dollars a race, that means we got five. We've given ourselves, we've limited ourselves to five chances. All right. And when you're betting horses at high odds, you need you need to put yourself in a better position than that, because what happens is you blow out your bank in the fit by five races, and guess what happens in the sixth race? That's the race you would you would have hit big on. I mean, that's the way the horse racing gods work. If you've been around the game a while, you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you blow your bankroll, here comes the race that you probably meant to play the whole day anyway. That the, the race you came to play, and you're already broke by that race because we're not managing the bankroll correctly, or, or at all. So 1% to 2% max will virtually guarantee that you never blow your bankroll, okay? Uh, so that's why, you know, we have that in place. And this is... All this stuff that I'm talking about is assuming you want to make a long-term profit, if that's your goal. Some players just like action, okay? And that's fine, too. I understand that. Some players just want a lot of action. If they break even, they're happy. That's fine. I mean, you know, you can be a very happy and successful member with our reports doing it that way, too. But uh, if you want to make a long-term profit, you got to have the handicapping, the wagering strategies that are proven, and the bankroll management. You show me somebody has all of that, and you've got a long-term profitable horse player. And that's how you get from A to Z. All right, 21 minutes. Okay, that's your Monday sermon. Uh, Monday live on Saratoga. you got to love that in the summertime. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to view. And also, on the Horse Racing Digest page, you got the banner for the Discovery Video Series. It says View Old Discovery Videos. You can follow, click that and follow that for that series. And then the previous video series, there's over 424 videos there. Okay? So this is your library. Okay? You got nearly 500 videos uh, of me showing you exactly what to do and how to do it. All right, this is a, a resource library, free, always free. Uh, as a matter of fact, I encourage people to study my videos and read my articles before you become a member or a subscriber. Because a well-educated subscriber that knows how to interpret and read these reports can make money. Okay, some people, they subscribe, then they learn. All right, they kind of learn. But hey, any way you want to do it, it's a free country. I'm not going to tell you, but you know, I I I always recommend new subscribers to take your time and uh, watch the videos and try to digest what we have going on here before you actually become a subscriber. And uh, if you want to make a long-term profit, you're in the right direction. You're headed in the right direction. All right, thank you for viewing. Good luck with all your bets.